we started off uh, the past uh, 10 lectures or so with a reasonably detailed model of a uh, synchronous machine. In fact, we considered uh, several windings on the rotor. I mean in fact, one can imagine that the simplest model which could give most of the uh, correct information, most correct information of uh, how a synchronous machine behaves especially in steady state etcetera can be got without considering damper windings, because eventually the current goes down to 0. Of course, during transient conditions as well, one it would be useful to work out some simple models of a synchronous machine. So, that uh, well there are three reasons why one can look for simplified models. One of course, is that the data for detailed models may not be available, we may not get all the standard parameters. Sometimes in our studies, uh, these this kind of data is not av available. On the other hand, uh, one would like to have all this data and use a detailed model. In some cases of course, you will find that uh, you can model a generator by a sim more simple model than what we have considered. For example, hydro turbines it turns out can be represented by one less damper winding on the q axis. So, uh, one can actually work with uh, a simple simplified model uh, which is uh, uh, suitable for a hydro turbine. Of course, if you one wants to do a theoretical analysis and try to get information about phenomena without worrying too much about uh, you know getting a great deal of accuracy. In that case, one may wish to work with lower order models. They give uh, they seem to give better insight. Right now, of course, if we look at our synchronous machine model, it contains a large number of equations. Okay. So, you have got in fact, uh, if you consider the zero sequence equations as well you will have 7 flux equations, 7 differential equations uh, of flux okay, in addition to the electromechanical equations. And as we shall, we shall see later in this course, when you consider an integrated power system, you have got lots of synchronous machines and so on. So, what you will find is that uh, the number of equations becomes quite large and one may not be able to do uh, you know any kind of theoretical or uh, 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 a kind of insightful analysis into a synchronous machine without invoking uh, fairly detailed and sophisticated numerical tools. Okay. So, I think it is a, a worthwhile uh, to look at somewhat simplified synchronous machine models, uh, which ignore one or the other damper winding. In fact, actually we have already worked out one simplification, uh, which is okay when we study slow transients that is uh, you know replacing d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t is equal to 0 and converting the corresponding uh, equations into algebraic equation. That was one simplification which we did, which was justifiable in case one used uh, one one was really interested in only slow transients. Okay. So, that is one thing which we have already done. Uh, what we will do now in this uh, in today's lecture come with come up with uh, more simple models in which we will be neglecting one or the other damper winding or even uh, we, we may neglect all the damper windings uh, and come up with a simple model. Now, uh, one uh, interesting thing which I want to do by the end of this lecture is uh, using uh, the you know the model which we have derived using two damper windings on the q axis and one on the d axis along with the field winding. Uh, uh, I want to come to a point where I can show you that you can get what is known as the classical model of a synchronous machine, which we have used to derive or rather understand some important phenomena right in the beginning of the course. Okay. So, what are the approximation involved approximations involved in getting such a simplified model of a synchronous machine? So, that is something we will try to uh, you know try to uh, understand by the end of this to, uh, by this lecture. Okay. Now, uh, so today's uh, lecture is titled simplified synchronous machine models. Just a uh, one small point about uh, the, the kind of uh, terminology we will be using. We have derived what is known as or we shall call as the 2.2 model of a synchronous machine. A 2.2 model of a synchronous machine involves two damper windings on the q axis. this of course, refers to the rotor windings. Okay. 
and one damper winding and one field winding on the d axis. Okay. This is a fairly detailed model, it is a quite a respectable model to use especially for steam turbine driven generators. Okay. Round rotor generators normally we would use such a full blown model. Okay. Now, what if uh, we want to get a simplified model? In fact, before I go ahead with trying to reduce the number of rotor windings and getting simplified models with lesser number of rotor windings, let us look at one of the approximations we have already made just for the sake of revision. Okay. So, let us just first look at the q axis per unit model. Okay. So, we will just look at what we have so far in the 2.2 model. We have got different two differential equations corresponding to the two damper windings in the q axis. We have an algebraic relationship relating psi q to the current and psi k in psi g and we have of course, a differential equation in psi q d psi q by d t. Okay. Now, in the d axis with an assumption okay, that t d c double dash is equal to t d double dash, we have a similar model, okay. but of course, one of the windings here uh, is uh, uh, you know is the field winding. Okay. The field winding is of course, affected by what voltage you apply to the field. Okay. So, that field uh, uh, field wind the effect of the field winding in uh, in these per unit equations is captured by E f d. Okay. So, if you look at what E f d is it is of course, related to the field voltage which is applied at the field winding. Okay. Of course, we have zero sequence, uh, sequence equations as well, which you, you may require to use in case you are doing unbalanced analysis. Okay. And we have the torque equation in per unit that is uh, relating the rate of change of the speed of the synchronous machine with the electromagnetic torque, which is a function of course, of the fluxes and currents. Okay. So, this is where we are. Okay. This is a kind of Mount Everest. Uh, of synchronous machine modeling. Now, we look we slide down Mount Everest and we look at approximate models. Okay. One of the models which you have already uh, kind of beaten to death or rather one approximation which you have uh, considered fairly uh, in the past two or three lectures was uh, replacing the d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t differential equation by algebraic equations. This was done simply by setting d psi d by d t equal to 0 and d psi q by d t equal to 0. So, in that equation we just, just replaced d psi d by d t equal to 0 and d psi q by d t equal to 0. So, this is uh, an approximation which is valid in case we are talking of slow electromechanical transients. Okay. Slow electromechanical transients, the swings which we were discussing in uh, some of the lectures. Okay. Now, uh, while operating near the nominal speed, we could if we are all our electromechanical transients in fact, are uh, if uh, are taking place if we are near the nominal speed, we could in this particular equation replace omega by omega b. Okay. So, that becomes a kind of a constant multiplication factor. Okay. Now, uh, this kind of uh, approximate model can be used if you are of course, near the nominal speed, you cannot use this approximation of omega approximately being equal to omega b if you are trying to simulate or uh, you know so, you know understand a synchronous machine right from the process of synchronization okay that is starting rolling out rolling the generator and getting it near the synchronous speed when the speed is not too close to the synchronous speed we cannot make that approximation of omega being e approximately equal to omega b in this particular equation okay but as i mentioned if you are talking of transients in which you are not going to deviate too much from 50 hertz or 60 hertz whatever your nominal speed may be then of course this equation is valid okay if one is studying slow transients so this is one of the approximations that we have made and we saw that it didn't make much of a difference uh, during our short circuit studies in fact it made some difference all right but it did not affect the modes associated with the slow transients. So, that was the basic uh, uh, effect of this uh, of this approximation. Of course, do not make this approximation if you are going to study fast transients say which uh, which occur in time scales of 1 or 2 cycles of course, that would not be correct 
it would not be right to uh, set d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t equal to 0 in that case. Okay. So, this is one uh, approximate model which we have done. We move on to making approximations not in the stator coils psi d and psi q of course, are stator coils. What we will do is making makes a few approximations as far as the rotor coils are concerned. So, the simplest thing we can do is one of the damper windings we the effect of it is neglected. So, for for doing that what we need to do is uh, consider one less damper winding in our original uh, you know derivation of the synchronous machine model, but uh, rather than of course, redoing the whole derivation again uh, a simple thing which can be done is of course, open the that dap particular damper winding. So, suppose you have of course, got the d and q winding. So, in the q axis rotor windings are of course, 2 the g and the k winding and there is a field winding and a damper winding on the d axis. What I need to do is in this particular model in order to simplify it is get rid of this effect of this winding. So, what you can do of course, is set the resistance of this winding. For example, this winding r k if the winding r k I set the resistance to be a very large value. In that case, it is as good as opening the damper winding in which case of course, no current will flow in the damper winding that particular damper winding and uh, its effect is in uh, would get nullified. Okay. Now, uh, uh, important point which you should note is that when I set R k tending to infinity what effectively happens to the time constants that is something I leave as an exercise to you, but you can show that in such a case T q double dash tends to 0. So, if R k tends to infinity T q double dash tends to 0. How do I know that? Well, I know the equations relating the time constants okay, the time constants in the standard parameter model uh, standard parameters with the original inductances and resistances of the winding. Recall this uh, we have done it uh, somewhere in the between the 10th and the 20th lecture, where we were modeling uh, synchronous machines. Okay. Now, uh, so setting R k tending to infinity would mean that you are setting T q double dash tending to 0. Okay. Now, if you do that what happens? So, if you look at the basic equation uh, which is there. You can write this in fact as T q double dash is equal to minus psi k plus psi d. Okay. So, this is the equation which is there of the flux of this particular winding and if T q double dash tends to 0, you can roughly say that this term here becomes 0 and as a result of it psi k becomes equal to psi d. So, from this you get this. Okay. Now, if psi k is equal to psi d, you can replace psi k by psi t in the algebraic relationship which relates psi d uh, sorry psi q i q psi g and psi k. Okay. So, do you recall that equation? We will just have a look at it right away. So, what I am trying to say is of course, that you get psi k is equal to I am sorry uh, yeah it should be psi k equals to psi q this is some uh, uh, small error which I made while writing this this should have been psi q this should have been psi q yeah. So, getting back to the slide which I have you get psi k is equal to psi q. So, you can substitute psi k by psi q here in this algebraic equation the third equation is an algebraic equation and then if you do that you can write psi q as a function of is a function of i q something into i q plus something into psi g. So, the effect of psi k gets subsumed in psi q. Okay. So, what are these coefficients here and here? 
you can work it out. I will just write down what you get eventually. What you will get eventually is if you look at the slide, your equations of the 2.1 model, 2.1 because now we have got just one damper winding on the q axis will be given by one differential equation corresponding to psi g, one of course is corresponding to psi q and the algebraic equation relating psi q, i q and psi g becomes much simpler and you will notice that x q double dash no longer appears in this equation. So, for this particular model 2.1 model you do not require one set of time constants and one set of one basically you will not require one time constant and one reactance. Okay. So, it does not figure in the equations any longer. Okay. If you look at the slides again the last equation of course, is still the differential equation in the flux psi q. Remember that uh, you can make an approximation that you can replace d psi q by d t equal to 0 and get back to the approximation which we mentioned right at the beginning of this uh, beginnings of this lecture. Okay. That would be okay if you are studying slow transient. So, the last equation also could be simplified in case you are talking about slow transients. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things uh, which I should mention at this point is that the model 2.1 model which I have just discussed so far is found to be adequate uh, in the sense that it can represent the transients which occur in uh, hydro driven uh, hydro turbine driven synchronous generators. Okay. So, hydro turbine synchronous generators are often uh, represented by 2.1 model and do not be surprised if the data sheet of a hydro uh, hydro turbine generator has one less time constant and one less reactance. Okay. So, that particular uh, data will be not be given because it is adequate to model a hydro turbine just by 2.1 model. Okay. So, this is something you ought to keep in keep in mind. Now, uh, an interesting observation here which uh, you may have noticed is that if you look at the algebraic equation relating psi q and psi g and i q of course, it does not contain x it does not contain x q double dash there is no need of having x q double dash, but if you look at the algebraic equation. So, I will just write it down here psi q is equal to x q dash i q plus x q minus x q dash upon x q into psi g. If you look at this particular equation and compare it with the algebraic equation which we had for 2.2 model. So, if you look at the screen here you will see that the equation which was there before I will just write it a bit uh, quickly out here. Well, it looks pretty complicated, but something you will probably be able to suggest is that if I had directly set x q double dash is equal to x q dash in this equation, in that case you would have directly got this equation. Note that this whole this term would have disappeared this is in fact dash. So, this would be 1. So, we would be really getting back to these equations. So, uh, an interesting observation here is that if I want to go from 2.2 model that is the original uh, 2 dampers on the q axis model to 1 damper winding on the q axis, then what you can do actually is simply set simply set
simply said x q double dash is equal to x q dash in the 2.2 model equations. Now, why am I telling you to do this? Well, you may have already written a program or a you know a kind of a, a tool which does eigenvalue analysis or synchronization uh, the simulation numerical integration of the differential equations in the 2.2 model and somebody tells you suddenly well uh, a particular generator has to model not by 2.2 model, but it has to model by 2.1 model. In that case, you do not have to rewrite your program with lesser number of equations, you, you would need to tinker with your program. Instead of doing that, you just set x q double dash is equal to x q dash in the data. Okay. So, just look at these equations again, you will find that because of doing this, you will get rid of the effect of psi k. Okay. Of course, this equation would still be there, but it would be kind of decoupled from every I means the effect of psi k would not be effectively seen by a synchronous generator state of windings at all. Okay. So, the there is no harm in just setting x q dash is x q double dash is equal to x q dash and removing the coupling which psi k has with the rest of the equations. So, this is a pragmatic way of uh, using a program or a tool which which is programmed for 2.2 model directly make it suitable for use to directly make it suitable for use with 2.1 model just set x q double dash is equal to x q dash. Okay. Of course, you need not do it you can actually uh, even do another thing that is reprogram everything for a lower order model that is also possible. So, in case you do that you will have to use these equations the lesser number of equations in your programming. Okay. So, this is what basically is uh, you do when you neglect the effect of one damper on the q axis. Now, before we go ahead let us just see what happens in uh, in case we try to simulate a system with a lower order model okay, of a synchronous machine. So, what we will do is take the data which we have been using for studying the synchronization transient. In fact, the data is for a round rotor machine, but all the same we will still, still use it for uh, you know uh, just comparing what happens in case you take a simplified model. So, what I will do is I have programmed, uh, I have programmed uh, the program for 2.2 model, but I will simply make this uh, the simplification x q double dash is equal to x q dash and effectively get 2.1 model. Okay. So, I will just do that. So, we will get back to our scilab program and uh, what I will do is of course, first of all show you the original speed transient under synchronization. We have been doing this in the past few lectures. So, I, I need not explain everything right from scratch. It is basically a transient which uh, which shows the synchronization of a synchronous machine to an infinite bus followed by torque and field voltage increases. Okay. So, this is increase in torque and field voltage. So, these are the transients which you see. Now, in case you take this program and in that set x q double dash which is here equal to x q dash. So, if you do that how does it affect? So, let us just try if we can do it of course, we have to hope and pray that. So, the program runs without any problem it is just we have just changed the data we have not really changed anything in the program. Okay. So, if I plot this now and look at what we get well you notice something well, the original program the damping was much higher, okay. whereas now in all the transients which are considered one thing you can notice is that the transient takes a longer time to die down. In fact, in a synchronous machine with a da one damper winding less it appears that the damping has reduced. This is not very surprising. In fact, uh, you know one may say that the damper winding derives its name in some sense from the damping effect that it has. So, if you actually reduce the amount of damping in that case that is by removing one damper it is not surprising that we get this larger time for decay 
of the transient. Okay. So, this is something which is not at all surprising. Uh, this is effectively the response we will get the top one which you see here, the one which is taking a long time to die is effectively the response without a damper winding, one of the damper windings. Okay. So, let us go back and also do the Eigen analysis, we will do exactly the same thing and do an Eigen analysis, Eigen value analysis using a linearized model which we discussed in the previous class. So, now I will just run the program. So, I just take out the Eigen values and the Eigen values are these. Well, not much can be understood from this unless we compare it with the Eigen values with the 2.2 model. So, what I just now showed you were the Eigen values with 2.1 model. I will rerun the program to see the Eigen values with 2.1 model. So, what you notice here of course, is that there is a significant change in the real part of the Eigen value corresponding to the electromechanical oscillation which is seen in the speed transient. Okay. So, this is consistent with what we have seen before. In fact, uh, of course, we need to just check out the operating point which we are talking of. Yeah. So, what we see here is of course, that if I take 2.2 model, the real part of the Eigen value is 1.4 roughly, whereas the Eigen value here is 1. So, you see that with 2.1 model, the damping of the swing mode is slightly lower. Okay. So, this is something we seem it seems to be consistent with what we see here. We see a slower rate of decay when, uh, when we consider a lower order model. Okay. Now, uh, remember here that we are not doing any closed loop feedback control of the field voltage. The field voltage is practically a constant. We are either giving step changes or we are keeping it a constant. We shall see later in uh, uh, the later part of this course that the feedback control of the field voltage in a synchronous machine can again affect the damping of the electromechanical or what is known as the swing mode, okay? that uh, oscillatory mode, which is uh, has a frequency uh, of around 10, around 10 radian, uh, that is 12 radians per second here. Okay? Now, let us go one step ahead. Let us go to a model. Now, what I will do is go a bit faster and talk about what next can be done. You can in fact, go to what is known as the 1.1 model. In 1.1 model, we have done the corresponding thing with the damper winding H. So, what I have done is set R H tending to infinity and therefore, got rid of the differential equation corresponding to psi capital K and as a result of which we get a simplified model with just one differential equation and as I mentioned last time the same thing can be done here. You can get this lower order model directly by setting x, q, x d double dash is equal to x d dash. So, if you have already programmed 2.1 model or 2.2 model to get to 1.1 model, you all you need to do in that program is to set x d double dash is equal to x d dash. Alternatively, you can program a lower order model. Okay. So, both of the thing, both these things can be actually done. Okay. We can go one step further, we can actually uh, you know get rid of the last remaining winding damper winding on the q axis okay. that is the g winding, but uh, at this point let us just take a small diversion not a very big one. If from this 1.1 model, a 1.1 model means you will be using these equations on the q axis and these equations on the d axis. Okay. So, that is 1.1 model. I will show it to you again. We will be using these equations in the q axis and these equations in the d axis. Okay. Now, one question which I would like to ask you is can we, can we get the equations of an induction machine from 1.1 model of a synchronous machine. 
the answer is yes from the 1.1 model equate x t dash and x q dash okay. an induction machine can be modeled a simple induction machine model could be by considering one damper winding on the d axis and one damper winding on the q axis. Remember a uh, induction machine does not have any field winding. So, what you can do is of course, these windings are absolutely symmetric if you look at a normal synchronous mach uh, induction machine both the d and the q axis appear similar there is nothing to distinguish a d and q winding. So, you need to set this I will call it x dash and what you need to do is of course, do this equate effectively what I have done is got from 1.1 model simply by setting x t dash is equal to x q dash and t d dash is equal to t d uh, t dash is equal to t dash is equal to t q dash. Okay. You can in fact, from the 1.1 model get a induction machine model. Okay. So, 1.1 model of a synchronous machine can directly yield to you uh, the induction machine model. You will of course, have to set E f d is equal to 0, this is something you need to do okay. and e effectively equate the d and q axis parameters, set E f d also equal to 0. So, these are the things you would need to do in case you wanted to derive an induction machine model directly from 1.1 model of a synchronous machine. Okay. So, this is a interesting diversion which, uh, which is apt at this point. Okay. Now, uh, we can go ahead and get rid of uh, even the remaining damper winding on the q axis. So, what we are going to do now is talk about a simplified synchronous machine model which does not have any damper winding at all. Okay. So, this is the what you will get effectively what you have done is set T q dash tending to 0. Basically, if you have R g tending to infinity that is your opening the last wind la remaining winding of the q axis in that case T q dash tends to infinity and in that case uh, we can kind of uh, convert the differential equation corresponding to the g g winding that is d psi g by d t t q dash is equal to psi g plus psi q. And if you do that, if you set d q t q dash tending to 0, in that case you will get psi g is equal to psi q. And if you uh, use this fact in the algebraic equations which you have seen earlier say if you look at the 2.1 model, if you look at this algebraic equation here, if you set psi g is equal to psi q, a few manipulations will get you to psi q is equal to x q i q. So, what you have in the q axis is just one algebraic equation and one differential equation corresponding to the stator winding that is psi q. Okay. So, one differential equation and one algebraic equation. In fact, the differential equation also can be removed by setting d psi q by d t is equal to 0 in case you are studying slow transients. Okay. So, this is what you get as 1.0 model. In fact, 1.0 model equations will have d, the d axis equations looking like this and the q axis equations looking like this. So, that effectively tells you what is the uh, 1.0 model of a synchronous machine. In fact, uh, this is uh, you can say the last or the most uh, basic of synchronous machine models where you are now you have just the field winding and the stator windings and all the damper windings have been uh, got rid of. Okay. Now, if you look at the behavior of a 1.0 model synchronous machine. So, what I do is in this generators program I set to get 1.0 model, what will I uh, uh, what I need to do is set first x t double dash is equal to x t dash 
that is what I have done first. Okay. The second thing you can do directly something which I have not mentioned here is that in the 2.1 q axis equations if I directly set x q dash is equal to x q you can get rid of uh, you can really come directly to this algebraic equation and uh, 1.0 model. So, that is what I will do right now what we will have here is I will set x q dash equal to x q and of course, I also need to x set x q double dash is equal to x q. So, that we get 1.0 model. Okay. So, this is 1.0 model x q double dash is equal to x q dash is equal to x q. So, by doing this we are directly modifying a program uh, we are not mo without modifying the program of 2.2 model we can effectively get the response of the simplified generator model and I have also said x q double x d double dash is equal to x t dash. So, let us try to simulate this in scilab. And if I plot this now, yeah. you get a totally different response. In fact, what you are saying is that the system is losing synchronism. Okay. So, in case you I will just the response is completely different. Okay. So, of course, one of the reasons why this could be happening let me just expand this view. Is a numerical reason. One of the reasons which why this could be happening is a numerical reason. That is, see if you look at the first curve here, it is with 2.2, this one is with 2.1. Okay. Now we have gone to 1.0 and you see growing oscillations. Now, is this correct or not? Okay. That we can say by actually finding out the eigenvalues of the system. For example, we try to try to find out the eigenvalues of the system for 1.0 model. Okay. Yeah. So, I have modified the data so that yeah and we will take out the eigenvalues of the system. Now, what you notice is the real part of the eigenvalue has become quite small it is it is minus 0.4. Okay. Now, one of the things you should remember here is that we are using Euler method to simulate the system and if the damping that the real part of an eigenvalue is low, Euler method may actually show it to be not a damped oscillation, but an increasing oscillation and this is what exactly is happening here. So, although eigen analysis shows that the system is in fact stable, what you get here is a growing oscillation. Okay. So, growing oscillation of course, will eventually cause a loss of synchronism. So, this is kind of spurious, but remember one thing. Uh, that uh, if we neglect the effect of all damper windings in 1.0 model, the damping of the swing mode may come down to a low enough value not necessarily to make the system unstable as is seen in this Eigen analysis, but which may cause misbehavior or other wrong information to be displayed in case we do a simulation using Euler method. Recall uh, in the first 10 lectures of this course we have discussed numerical integration techniques and there we did find uh, we did discuss this that uh, in case you use Euler method on a poorly damped uh, system with a poorly damped oscillation in that case you can in fact get wrong information. Now, the solution of this of course, is to keep on keep, uh, keep on reducing your uh, time step of the simulation till Euler method starts giving reasonably correct results, but of course, that will take a long long time to simulate if I really go on reducing my time step. Okay. 
So, one thing which you should remember now it is important to, uh, as a student to distinguish between two issues we are talking here. One is that with a lower order synchronous machine model 1.0 model, uh, the amount of damping or the amount of rate of decay of the swing mode has come down substantially. That is one aspect, that is the physical aspect. One more aspect is about the analysis. The damping has really come down to such an extent that if you try to simulate Euler using Euler method with a time step of, we will just, uh, I just forgot what the name of the variable is for time step, I will just get that. Okay, with a time step of 0 0.005, a system with a poorly damped oscillation like this one is likely to show. So, let us just see this again t step, yeah. A system uh, which has poor damping is likely to show. Uh, is likely to cause incorrect information being shown in a simulation in which Euler method is used with a time step of this kind. Okay. So, you really what you need to do as I mentioned some time back is go on reducing the time step or use a better numerical integration method. But of course, we have been using Euler method simply because it is an easy method to use. Uh, it is sacrilegious to use Euler method for any realistic uh, or uh, you know practical or industry grade program. I mean uh, because uh, of this particular problem that it is not very accurate it can give wrong information. So, this is another illustration of this. Okay. So, although the system is, is stable remember all the mm, eigenvalues for all operating points this is of course, the eigenvalues for a particular operating point. The eigenvalues have negative real parts. So, it is a stable system, but simulating it may result in problems if you are using methods like Euler method. So, that is the summary of what we have been discussing so far. Now, 1.0 model in some sense is uh, the limit of what simplification we can have in a synchronous machine. If we want to you know uh, get even you know a, a realistic picture in steady state you have to use at worst you will use this simplified model. Okay. Of course, uh, for theoretical studies involving uh, the swing mode, we can use a simplified model which includes no differential equation, no electrical differential equation, okay? no equation, differential equation corresponding to the flux. How do we get to that model? Well, this is not a very respectable model because, so I will just tell you how you can get to what is known as 0, 0.0 model, which is what is known as a classical model. A classical model is not a respectable model for getting realistic and quantitatively correct answers uh, as far as synchronous machine behavior is concerned. For example, you cannot use classical model to understand the nuances of what happens during a short circuit in a synchronous generator. Okay? So, uh, there are very great limitations in applying this classical model, but all the same I will just tell you what it is and how it is obtained and what kind of assumptions are inherent when you get to classical model. Remember that right in the beginning of the course when I was talking about uh, introducing you to things like loss of synchronism and uh, the, the you know the origin of swings power swings or rotor angle swings in a power system. I had used in fact the classical model. It is not a respectable model I called it a toy model then I will call it a toy model even now. Okay. But let us just see what really was involved in getting to this classical model. What you need to do is from 1.0 model, you can look at the screen again from 1.0 model. 1.0 model in requires these equations on the d axis and these equations in the q axis. What you do is you assume that the field winding resistance is very small as a result of which you can show using the basic equations which relate the standard parameters and the resistance and inductance parameters of a synchronous machine. You can show that T d dash becomes a very large value, it becomes tending to infinity. Okay. 
if T D dash tends to infinity, you are in effect saying that the field winding flux does not change. Okay. So, psi f here okay, is 0, d psi f by d t is equal to 0. So, psi f becomes a constant. So, what you have is you have got rid of the differential equation, the last remaining differential equation of the rotor field winding. Okay you have effectively said that psi f is simply a constant. Okay. Now, a further simplification of course, which we have been uh, which I talked to right in the beginning was you set c d psi d by d t equal to 0 as well. If you are going to slow uh, study slow transients, this is an okay approximation to make. So, what you have eventually is for the classical model setting d psi d by d t and d psi q by d t, we have got this model. Okay. So, this is a classical model of a synchronous machine, which does not have any differential equation, no electrical differential equation. We have got the mechanical differential equations, but there is no electrical differential equation. And a further simplification which you can make is R a is equal to 0 and x q dash x q is equal to x t dash. Now, this is absolutely an ad hoc assumption. This is no uh, you know kind of um, uh, justification which I can give you. Okay. So, classical model is uh, obtained by a large number of uh, approximations. So, if you want to get from 2.2 model to classical model, you have really made a huge a large number of approximations. So, what you will get of course, if you just go ahead with what you have got psi d is equal to x t dash i d plus e dash, e dash is that uh, is actually proportional to psi f which is assumed to be a constant. So, e dash is also a constant and you also have psi q is equal to x t dash i q. This is got by approximating x q is equal to x t dash an absolutely ad hoc assumption. Okay. We also from uh, we also have 0 is equal to this is by neglecting d psi d and d psi q by d t terms this is by neglecting d psi d by d t. So, we also make R a equal to 0. So, we will have minus omega b v d and psi q uh, we will also have is equal to omega b psi d minus omega b psi q. And what you can do is effectively substitute for psi d and psi q in these equations. So, what you will have eventually is if you do that you will have uh, omega v will ok. So, what you will have 0 is equal to minus of x t dash i q okay, minus of v d and what you will have here is x t dash i d plus e q e dash minus v q. Okay. Now, uh, we also have d omega by d t 2 h into d omega by d t by omega b into d omega by d t is equal to T m minus psi d i q minus psi q i d. Okay. Now, if you look at so, you have got these two algebraic equations and this differential equation. Now, if you are talking of a synchronous machine connected to an infinite bus or a stiff voltage source okay, uh, as the one which you have used for all our studies so far. In that case, V d is equal to V line to line R m s of that source into sin delta minus of it. So, this is the source whose characteristics I have discussed uh, in the previous lectures. So, if this is true, then it is easy to show, it is quite easy to show that psi d i q minus psi q i d from all the equations which we have got from these equations okay, and these equations. 
what you will get eventually is this is the electromagnetic torque is nothing but V line to line R m s by x t dash e dash sin delta. So, from this and this, this is what we have. So, the classical model effectively the torque, the torque equation or the electromechanical equations are d delta by g t is equal to omega minus omega naught. Omega naught is the frequency of the infinite bus and you have got 2 h by omega b and d omega by d t is equal to T m minus v line to line R m s e dash sin delta upon x dash and this is the transient reactance of the generator. Okay? We can call it just x dash. Okay? Now, uh, another interesting thing is of course, from these algebraic equations, if you look at these algebraic equations, you can write this very compactly you will have e dash okay, minus v q plus j v d. This is just multiplying the second equation by the complex number j. Okay. E dash minus this is equal to j x dash, x dash is nothing but x d dash. We need not apply the subscript any longer because we have equated the d a and q axis completely. This is what we get and uh, you know from what we have here, we have V q plus J V d can be written compactly as V line to line R m s okay, into yeah, e raise to It's simply that. And just have a look at it. Okay, so what we have here is eventually e dash into a minus v line to line R m s into e raise to minus j delta is equal to j into x i q plus j i d. And what we have from here effectively is e dash e raise to j delta minus v line to line r m s is equal to j x into i q plus j i d, where i q plus j i d is nothing but i q plus j i d into e raise to j delta. So, what we have here is effectively a synchronous machine model in which the electrical equations are simply given by this or effectively an electrical circuit. So, what we have effectively is an electrical circuit. So, if you want to represent the synchronous machine electrical equations, it is simply a phasor that is an algebraic equation. This is V line to line R m s of the infinite bus. This is E dash angle delta and the differential equations are d delta by d t is equal to omega minus omega naught. Omega naught is the frequency of the infinite bus and d omega by d t itself is nothing but T m minus e dash v line to line R m s sin delta by x dash. So, this is exactly the toy model which we used uh, in this in fact, right in the second lecture okay, with the kind of model which you have used here. In fact, this model predicts uh, an oscillatory response for delta and omega whenever there is a disturbance. So, what we have with 2.2 model is not only the electromechanical swing. In fact, if you recall, whenever you use a higher model with damper windings, the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues. are these. So, there are many, many modes here. Okay. Amongst them, we have got what is known as the swing mode. If you take the classical model directly, 
what you will have is simply uh, just because there are two differential equations just one mode and that will really represent as we have seen right in the beginning where we we did analyze this toy model we do get the electromechanical oscillation. So, classical model is ok just to theoretically highlight the fact that you do have such a mode which is mainly associated with the electromechanical variables delta and omega. Okay. So, just have a look at this classical model again yeah this should have been x dash here these are the differential equations. So, this is the classical model which is ok just ok for theoretical studies, okay. but please do not uh, it, it probably will give you uh, uh, fairly uh, it, it will probably give you wrong quantitative answers wrong in the sense highly imprecise uh, answers in case you try to use it for practical studies, okay. but nonetheless just using the classical model we can in fact show that a phenomena called swings occurs. Okay which is also evident in the 2.2 model, but the 2.2 model will also bring into picture many other modes which are present. Okay. So, this uh, brings to an end uh, practically an end our discussion of synchronous machines. We will just revisit a few minor points tomorrow in uh, the next lecture uh, and thereafter we will move on to another physical subsystem which is of importance in a power system that is the excitation system of a synchronous machine. We will discuss its modeling and also discuss how it looks physically.